Hello, welcome to my channel. We are going to start this video by doing the proverbial nickel test. You can see I got this American nickel and uh, it's worth about a penny these days, right? No glue, no super glue, no magnets, no trickery. I'm going to set this right here against the fence. Currently, we've got the fence set at three inches. We'll move it over to, I don't know, 14 and 7 sixteenths. 14 point four three seven five go fence moves over that's awesome let's bring it back to three inches three inches start check it out boom that is awesome yeah hello my name is Ramon Valdez and I've been using the tiger fence for hmm, about a month and I gotta tell you this thing is incredible extremely accurate wait let me rephrase that perfectly accurate right and let's let's talk about that for a second so in many situations accuracy is an ingredient of quality right i mean you can take a look at a uh, high-end watch for instance like a breguet or a patek philippe or even a rolex now i get it we're not building uh high precision time pieces here we're doing woodworking but in my mind it all adds up it all counts right so you start out accurate, and the final product, regardless of what it is, it will reflect that. So yeah, pricey. Quality costs, right? It should cost. However, knowing what I know now, I can easily say that it's totally worth it. And you'd soon realize that the tiger fence will quickly pay for itself. For instance, when I'm cutting dock parts, and there are literally hundreds of parts, each part of each dock size has to fit in an assembly or a production jig. And the jigs are a fixed size, it doesn't change. The parts must fit those jigs. So prior to the tiger fence, I would cut a part like a scrap and I would fit it to the jig and sneak up on a perfect fit. Once I was happy with that size, then I would make all my rips or whatever, cuts, cross cuts, whatever. But I'm, I was constantly checking each part of each dock size and there's a lot of them to make sure that it fit the jigs. If it didn't fit the jigs, that would be a problem later down the road. And now the tiger fence, all I have to do is punch in that number and I can punch in the number to the 64th. It is that accurate, huge time saver and actually just a blast to use. So anyway, if you have followed me on Instagram or YouTube for very long, you know me. I am not trying to convince anyone. I simply love sharing slash showing what works for me. All right, so what I have here is some Baltic birch, and here in the States, we call this five foot by five foot by five eighths thick. But anyway, these sheets of Baltic birch are 15, 24 millimeters square and 15 millimeters thick. Occasionally, I'll use the four by eight sheet size, but I like the five by five. They're just easy to manage, especially in a small shop. All right, let's move that fence over. Punch in the numbers, and boom. That is awesome, yeah? Well, I must have double-checked my paperwork, changed my mind, but you can see, it's easy to see, that it doesn't matter. I don't have to sight down the cursor on a fence. And actually, this saw doesn't even have a cursor, so you're lining up the left side of the fence with the scale. It's tricky. There's parallax that comes into play, and I can get close, but this thing is getting exact each and every time. That is wonderful. <laughs> I'm a dork, but I'm a happy dork. Oh, and by the way, the tiger fence, you can set stops, limits, so that I don't crash into my saw blade or even the dust shroud, right? So you can just put in whatever parameter you want, and it'll bring it right to that parameter and stop. If you have something that designates to go over, it'll tell you or give you a warning, and then you can override it. So here I'm adding my auxiliary crosscut fence, and it's not that accurate. So what I do is I just created this template, and I actually made a bigger one, you know, with longer edges. And it just has this two-degree angle, and I can easily use that against the crosscut fence and the rip fence to create that angle. I'm doing this because the main crosscut fence, I need that one to remain at 90 degrees. So I start by cutting both ends to 90 degrees. Then I can move it to the auxiliary crosscut fence, which is set at 2 degrees. 
make a cut, flip, repeat the process over and over till I have hundreds of these pieces. And so here's one of these pieces. The right side has this two degree angle. The left side at the top and the bottom is 90 degrees. Then of course there's lefts and rights. From there I cut the front pieces for the dock and each end, or each side I should say, both have a two degree angle. So I can just make my first angle and then flip using the scoring blade and just cut multiple pieces with the rip fence pulled back. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I first started, I had to move the fence out of the way to raise the scoring blade, but with the tiger fence, I'm easily able to put it right back. And here's what those pieces look like and this jig that I made to hold them. They go in this cradle. Sorry, I'm a little off camera there. But you can see that cam action holds that piece in place. Those small pieces are angled two degrees on each side. The jig with a cam action is actually a router base plate and I'll route a little recess for my logo. So yeah, all these parts have to be exact to fit within the jigs that I already have made. So yeah, the Tiger Fence makes this easy and accurate. It's kind of a funny thing. Now when I walk into my shop, all I want to do is cut parts <laughs> and use the Tiger Fence. It's just fun to use. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that it will do metric. It'll handle metric and imperial, of course. Also, it'll handle fractions or decimal equivalents, which is what I'm used to. And another aspect of the Tiger Fence that I haven't even uh, looked at yet is the capability of storing cut lists. So that will be ideal for these domino docks. Not sure why, but it's always fun to see that fence move over. And something to note is that the Tiger Fence makes a little bit of a hum but you only hear that when, well, when the saw is not running or when your vacuum is not running. Uh, so most of the time your saw is running, of course, when you're using the Tiger Fence, and so you don't really hear it. But that's just the servo motors trying to maintain position. So that kind of freaked me out when I first heard that, and after a quick email and a phone call, the guys assured me that that's not an issue. It's not a, a problem at all. But I wanted to point out, my point is, I should say, is that they have great technical uh, support. So I've been aware of the Tiger Fence for a number of years, and last August I was at the show in Atlanta, the IWF show, and was able to visit their booth and see the Tiger Fence in action. It was just extremely impressive. So yeah, for someone like me that's constantly cutting this many parts that have to be accurate, I knew that this would be a great fit for my shop, and man, let me tell you, I am extremely pleased with this addition. So typically, I will make batches of 50 in these docks in both sizes, because they're a lot of work, and I usually have something else that is pressing, but I have to keep my inventory stocked. However, with the Tiger Fence, this time I was able to produce 90 docks, and that happened because the repeatability, the accuracy, the efficiency all happened and I just kept cutting parts. <laughs> Here I'm cross cutting some more parts. I believe these are for the XL700, the larger dock, but I still have a tendency to double check things and I know I'll get used to the being able to trust the Tiger Fence, but yeah, they were spot on. I don't know if you've heard of me mention, but this K3 hammer, it's what I call an entry level slider. It's not the best, but with the Tiger Fence, this saw cuts extremely accurate and I'm very happy with it. All right, that's a few parts that'll hold me over for mm, about a month and a half, but man, what a time saver the uh, Tiger Fence is. So this part, Once it's sanded, it goes in this jig. So you can see how accurate everything has to be. And this is designed to hold a cradle like this guy. So this gets pre-finished and then this other part gets pre-finished, right? And then this jig goes in my vise and then the cradle gets attached and then the units get shipped out. So with the Tiger fans, I know that all my parts are gonna come out accurate 
These are fronts for uh, a different size and they fit in this jig because they haven't been sanded yet. Once they're sanded, this would be sanded, fits that jig perfectly, right? So everything is accurate thanks to the Tiger Fence. I absolutely love that thing. Oh, and when I first started using the Tiger Fence, this was a pleasant surprise. Check it out. My existing fence was 39 inches long, right? With about 990 millimeters. This Tiger Fence is 43 and a half inches long, so substantially different at 1105 millimeters. And so when you go to engage a sheet, you can see my sh the sheet is in front of the blade and it contacts much sooner, so the registration is a lot easier. And just an added bonus that I thought was really awesome of Tiger Fence to produce a much longer fence. All right, that was about six hours of cutting and then uh, today I'm starting to do some, some prep work and some assembly. I'm routing out that little recess for my logo, some pre-drilled holes. Logo looks like that and then the assembly. This is for the cradle, for the DF500. So yeah, lots of parts and I'm able to cut them quickly and accurately, so efficiently and all done with the tiger fence. Well, it always feels good to have all these parts sanded and lacquered and sub assemblies made. And here I have this jig and you can see how it just fits in that vertical jig perfectly. I don't even need to clamp it. That's the accuracy that I can produce with the tiger fence. Pre-drill some holes, add some screws, and bam, there's another DF500 dock that will be shipped off to a happy customer. Now real quick, if you're not familiar with the dock, do a quick Google search, check out my Instagram or YouTube, or just a Google search and you'll find what the dock is all about. This is a cradle for the DF500. I also make one for the XL700. These hold the domino machine in an upright position so you can leave the machine running and bring small parts to the machine rather than taking the machine to the small part. And we're, I'm actually working with Seneca Woodworking. They are cutting these docks for the DF500 and the 700. And you can see that these have all the CNC uh, mortise and tenon. These are sent as a flat pack. This is called a flat pack version. It's a lower price point, but I still get orders for the sanded finished lacquered version of the DF500 and the XL700. Anyway, lots of parts, a lot of fun. Very accurate. I'm very happy with this thing. Thanks a ton for watching. Peace.